<laughs> How you doing folks? Hiya. Welcome back to Tapping Off Farm <laughs> and welcome to our daughter Lillian who arrived a couple of weeks ago, two weeks before her due date. Her due date was actually today. Today, yeah. So we've been having a beautiful time yeah. these last couple of weeks getting to know our wee daughter. We're all healthy and happy. Yeah, the birth went very smoothly. Mm -hmm. It was actually wonderful. It was lovely. Uh, yeah, um, she was a bit of a surprise. I didn't expect her to be coming that day. It really all happened quite fast. Yeah. Um, but she was born at home. Yeah, born in the cottage. Yeah, and it was yeah, it was. It's just been lovely ever since. So yeah. we've had a lot of lovely quiet time just with the yeah. family. Mm -hmm. um, spent spending time inside with the fire on being cozy and also getting out mm -hmm. like we are today just having a wander around the farm going on goat walks which yeah so enjoyed I think we yeah. took her out on her first micro yeah. herd on day two or three yeah <laughs> she's been really enjoying it mainly in her sleep but... talking of goats we've got another little <gasps> surprise to show you in a minute but I'll get back to that later. Um, <laughs> obviously, we have been carrying on with uh, work around the farm. Mm -hmm. um, I've been out getting the vegetables in our market garden, which for this year we've stopped the veg boxes so that we mm -hmm. can concentrate on raising Lillian mm -hmm. and uh, getting the shepherd's hut off the ground. But yes. of course, we're still growing a huge amount of veg for ourselves as mm -hmm. a family. So. That's been my priority is just getting the last few veggies out into the garden. Mm -hmm. We're just going to give you a catch up today on some of the things we've been doing over the last few weeks since we last made a vlog. So yeah, general catch up and then we'll, we've got some veggies, we've got, we've yeah, got some brassicas. Yeah, we've got the yeah, last yeah. of these veggies to put in the market garden. Mm -hmm. um, Only three brassica beds this year, which is a oh, sigh of relief because yeah, that's always a kind of big job for big the job. veg box. Yeah, the brassicas usually take up yeah. a huge um, portion of mm -hmm. the plots in the market mm -hmm. garden and we often have to put these big nets up over them over them to be able to stop cabbage root fly and um, cabbage, white. cabbage whites. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll still be doing that, but yeah, it's Much far, more far manageable. Less <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everything's really great. Yeah, we've got uh, some lovely weather. Yeah, which is beautiful making it weather. All just, yeah feel really gorgeous yeah. and spring-like and yeah. thank you so much yeah. for all the well wishes that we yeah. received on yeah. Instagram for Lillian's birth we felt very supported from all of that so yeah. so much positive energy which is really mm -hmm. nice definitely yeah. yeah yeah fantastic thank you <laughs> <laughs> So we're going to go and do the chores, um, our morning chores. I've either been doing them by myself or have taken Lily along a couple of times. So just getting used to taking her along for the ride, but Rose is carrying her today. Last time we saw you, we had the chickens in the small polytunnel where they have been since November last year due to a avian flu um, lockdown or flock down that restriction has now been lifted and the chickens are free all the poultry are free to be outside so we've got the chickens in this small orchard area that we've developed this year we've got some apples and cherries and it goes on up to the forest gardens we've got one escaped hen here Whee! Uh, so yeah, great to have them outside. They're much happier being out and about. Um, so we've got to tidy up the small polytunnel after the chickens have been in there because we're going to be using that tunnel this year uh, for growing um, crops that we want to get to quickly that have to be inside. A little bit like not having to grow hundreds of brassicas this year, we don't have to grow a huge amount of courgette. Um, because one or two plants is enough for our needs so they'll be going in that small polytunnel rather than the big tunnel so that we can just nip up the hill behind the cottage and get them. So we're going into the buyer now just to check on the goatee girls and of course have you guessed it this new arrival this other new arrival we've, of course we've got <laughs> Lillian being the first new arrival she came first yes yeah, she did the next new arrival, or new arrivals, is in here.
we're actually lucky enough to witness um, one of these guys being born. Um, as far as I'm aware, no one, uh, none of kind of uh, the people who have looked after Mandy have witnessed her birthing any of her kids. Um, and we didn't witness her birthing Billy and Myrtle, the first kids she had here. But James came out to check on them. This will be three days ago now. Uh, to check on Mandy and the other, the white goats. And uh, found that, well, she'd given birth to um, a male kid, the male kid here that we called Billy again. Um, and uh, and so ran, ran back to get me. Um, and I came out with Lillian and we <laughs> witnessed um, her birthing the second, the female uh, kid here, who we've called Blossom. Uh, after the blossoms, the white blossoms that are all out on the farm at the moment, uh, the cherries and things like this. Um, so yes, uh, it was really magical because uh, we've yeah <laughs> never seen Mandy do that before, and she was brilliant. She was just so great. She was licking Billy and not standing on him or anything while she was also giving birth to Blossom. So yeah, brilliant mother. Um, they're feeding well. They're dancing around. Uh, I'm just trying to make sure I can get that weight back on her because she dropped in weight a little bit towards the end of the pregnancy. So, um, but she's really happy. James has been bringing her lots of delicious tree snacks as he kind of prunes things around the farm. So yeah, she's very happy, um, I think right now, um, just having this space and time with her new kids. So the day that Rosa gave birth, we as a family were working here in the buyer and we were putting in some partition walls uh, in preparation for the goat kids arriving, which we kind of thought would happen before Lillian arrived. Um, and the very simple kind of post and rail design, we bought some timber backs or timber slabs, 4.8 meter length, which were delivered. Um, and these are great, we could just nail these on. If you can see where I am in the buyer, this partition wall never used to be here. Um, so now it means that we've got this division running down the center of the buyer so that we can have quite a large area now devoted to hay and straw storage and we can pretty much feed the goats from this position. There were two white goats who are currently dried off. They're stationed inside this area. And then Mandy and the kids have got that whole back area to themselves. Um, Heather, the very large British son in here, is quite um, bullish in her behaviour sometimes. So we just weren't sure how she was going to be around the young kids. So it was better. We thought it was better to separate them. It also was something that we did because Mandy often wasn't able to get the food that she needed um, because of Heather being the kind of dominant goat. Um, and also Mandy needing to eat little and often. Um, it just meant that by separating her before she gave birth, we could just try and make sure she could be left with food that she could eat at her leisure, rather than having to wolf it down whilst we were pushing Heather away. It was actually something I'd been wanting to do for a while, was to make Mandy this separate area, just because she was getting bullied a bit and dropping in weight. Um, so yeah, that was it was quite funny that uh, once we'd got this job done that I'd had him on my mind for quite a long time, I actually ended up giving birth that evening. Because a lot of people say, kind of sometimes your baby or your body seems to wait until you feel ready. Um, and that was just the last thing ticked off the list. Um, so yeah, no, it was good timing in the end. All right, that's the goats tended to. Everybody's healthy and happy in there. Rose is very tempted to take Mandy and the kids out for their first little foray outside of the buyer. So we'll see, we might get time for that later on. Okay, so we're just gonna take a wander over to the big polytunnel in the market garden. Have a look at what's going on there and scratch our heads a bit about what to do today.
steaming up a bit in here. <laughs> All right, so the polytunnel hasn't changed a huge amount over the last few weeks. Um, we've tarped it just to stop the weeds from growing in the beds. We've finished making all the new beds. It looks very bare in here, considering we're into May, but that's because we still haven't really got the crops that we need to put in the tunnel ready yet. They are still over here in the propagation area um, on heat mats, although they don't need the heat mats today. So we've got, oh, we need a bit of a drink, but we've got most of our courgettes and melon and um, squash in here just growing on ready to put out into the beds and over on the propagation table we've got the other crops that have just popped up like the french beans and runner beans dwarf beans things like that now look at this sad and sorry sight this is the extent of our tomatoes we had we have lost all of our tomatoes except for this one <laughs> to a frost. This is actually the first time this has ever happened to us in the, well, the 10 years we've been growing veg here actually, we've never lost a tomato crop to frost and it happened a couple of days after Lillian was born. Um, even in here, they got hit by the frost. So it must've been quite a bad one. Um, some of the other plants in here got a little bit of a frost damage tinge to their leaves the figs got a little bit of damage um, so yeah even with the tomatoes up on the bench um, and end of April beginning of May obviously we still get frosts that can be quite damaging at this time of year um, but we've never experienced it up on a bench and in the tunnel so yep lost the tomatoes um, so we're gonna order some plugs um, and just so that we can have some homegrown tomatoes because they are one of our favorite things because we're obviously too late to seed now won't be long before we're planting up the beds in here because um, as you can see everything is getting to the size that we can start planting out so that will be a job to do quite soon most of our concentration has been on the veg beds outside in the market garden we're really just operating the smallest of gardens this year because we aren't doing the veg box business this year. I mean, I say that to be honest, we do have a group of people who have put their number into a WhatsApp group that we're calling Glutzapp um, because we're fully aware that growing on this, even on this small scale of um, the plot here, we're going to have gluts of certain vegetables, whether that's salads or some of the root crops probably. And so we put the word out to the members of our CSA that we obviously had to let know that we weren't going to be doing a weekly veg box drop this year and we got a great response from people who would still love to support us and, and buy veg if we have some spare so we've got that um, as a way of selling surplus so that's how it's going to work this year we're going to grow all our own veg from this plot and this of course is going to be still a large amount of veg grow all our own veg that we need for our family needs and then sell any surplus and that's how we feel this small farm works best taking care of our own needs take responsibility for yourself and your family that's the prime directive of permaculture and then work with that return of surplus so whatever the land here generates that is maybe too much for us we'll be storing that and fermenting that and drying it and freezing it of course but anything fresh that's left, we can um, bring in a little bit of revenue from that. So the geese are out and about, they've got a really large area of grazing behind me here, above the market garden. Please, noisy, noisy, noisy. Um, yeah, the geese are grazing this area of silver pasture above the market garden. This is a mixture of hazel and chestnut. And we're putting some fruit trees in there, we've got some pear in there too. And as you can see, some lovely grass in there for them in amongst the tree tubes. 
Uh, but this is where we were mostly grazing the sheep before we sold them. So the geese are filling that niche very well. And looking at the grass growth in here, um, we're going to bring them in here eventually. These are two plots in the market garden that we're no longer using. We're really just focusing on plot one where I was, um, which is actually not even 20 beds anymore. So this half of the market garden has really just been put aside because we're still thinking what we'd like to do. We don't know whether we might get back to the veg box, the CSA. Maybe we would find someone else to run the veg box from these plots. Um, maybe we'll plant this up to trees, to more uh, fruit trees, more forest garden tree rows that we have here. Um, so currently, as you can see, we've got a silage sheet down, just stopping these beds turning into getting too weedy. Although I think what we are gonna do this year is get this seeded up with a nice green manure or grazing mix that the geese can feed from. That's what we did in this plot here towards the end of last year. I think we sowed this at the end of the summer actually. Um, and it's been very successful. The geese have grazed it a couple of times and it was a wonderful blend of various uh, grasses and herbs and vegetables actually that we had spare. And um, that's been a great way just to keep, to boost the fertility in these beds which have been pumping out veg for nearly six seasons. Um, so yeah, I think we're gonna repeat that method over here instead of having the plastic. Um, but the geese are going to be very beneficial here for us to be able to keep the grasses down so that these young fruit trees that we're planting everywhere don't have too much competition from the grass and we can feed the geese. So I've just been dibbering in some holes into this bed. We're going to be planting uh, kale and cauliflower into this bed and we thought it was best to give each plant a handful or so of compost. That compost that I was getting out of our compost area has been maturing for about two years now. It's a really nice blend of goat bedding and chicken manure, even some cow manure from our neighbour plus all the crop residue from the market garden, cabbage leaves and stalks and stems and all of that. For those of you who've been watching us for a while, you'll remember that last year we got a large amount, several tons of compost delivered and it wasn't the best of compost. Very woody, really great as a mulch, uh, but really didn't have enough nutrients in it as a growing medium. So we're always trying to boost up the fertility again of the beds. So we're adding bokashi and we're adding compost and we're watering with as many different fertilizers as possible, homemade comfrey and nettle um, fertilizer liquid tea. So the compost we're, I'm just about to add, we'll be doing that. We'll be planting each plant into a little handful. The brassicas will love that. I've just done enough for the kale and then I'll do spacing for the cauliflower. Yeah, these are the cauliflower here. Um, we've just got one tray because we're going to do two successions of mm. them. So it might not fill half the bed. Although, to be honest, I think it used to be something like we used to fit about 70 to 80 cauliflowers in a bed. To be honest, this probably is half a bed. Um, but I have sewn another succession of them. <laughs> so we'll see what we can fit around.
kale and cauliflower has popped in the ground. We're gonna put some hoops in now uh, to prepare for covering them because we always cover our brassicas with insect netting. Um, we've had some disastrous attacks of cabbage root fly over the years, especially when we were producing for um, the CSA. We lost uh, a good amount of brassicas over a few days to cabbage root fly. So we've learned our lesson and for us the easiest way is just to chuck a net on top of them. We've also got a lot of pigeons in the trees up here above us that like to come down and eat these tender young plants that we put out. So the nets really help. But until we get the other two beds of these three brassica beds done, planted out, we're not going to put the final netting on today. Uh, so we'll put a fleece on or something for the next wee while until the other two beds are done and then we'll stick one net over the three beds. So to protect from the birds and actually any cabbage root fly or anything that could surprise us early. Also it's just great for transplants when you just set transplants out. Fleece really helps, gives the plants some good conditions to take root, protects them from strong winds, cold winds, keeps the humidity in, just reduces stress really uh, from transplanting. All right, I think we're gonna go and let the kids out for the first little foray of the farm. Well, not the whole farm, we're just gonna keep them to the area to the north of their byre, which is like a little yard. So um, yeah, looking forward to this, letting them out, having a look around. Right, guys, I think we've come to the end of the day here at Tappanoff Farm. That was really nice. Yeah, they didn't um, go as far as I thought they would, but actually that's that's nice because yeah. we'll take it step by step I think every Mandy, few days. Mandy was a bit concerned to go too far, which is great. She's yeah. a very protective mother. She hates mm -hmm. it when the dogs get too close. Wonderful to see them. The rest of the family came out to have a watch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Including this one. She's, yeah, obviously really She's interested. Fast asleep. asleep, yeah. <laughs> She'll be taking it all in. All right, guys, I hope you're all well out there. Thanks for watching today, and we'll catch you next time. Bye. See ya. <laughs>